G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Now today I've got a brand new pattern for you. It is a little mama dog with her puppies. But before we start, I want to give a great big appreciative shout out to a new Facebook group called Share Your Lisa Pay Creations and Pay It Forward. And this is a group in the UK, a wonderful group of uh, people who are very creative and are having a lot of fun playing with my patterns. And I'm very humbled and very, very appreciative. Um, and they even let me join. So <laughs> I'm enjoying seeing what you're doing with my patterns, everybody. And it is such a supportive little group. And um, you get to see what everybody else is doing, tweaking my patterns and playing with them. And uh, it's a great positive community. And some of the messages of paying it forward are absolutely heartwarming. So I'm gonna put the link to this lovely group in the description box below. How about you go along and have a look and see what everybody else is doing um, with my pay it forward patterns. So on for today, we have our little mama dog and she has her puppies and she's very simple to make. Actually a really good pattern for beginners. I know it looks like there's a lot there, um, but it's very simple. I'm gonna walk you through it every step of the way, of course. And I have your free pattern templates all ready for you. All you need to do is click on the link in the description box below. You'll find your link for the free pattern templates. You can print those out. Make sure that you set your printer to print at actual size so that these pattern pieces will all be absolutely correct. And I include all seam allowances in my pattern. So let's get busy making little mama dog. So let's start by running through our pattern pieces. I'm doing this a little in reverse today with our little dog here. So our first pieces we need are our front and back pieces. Now you can see there that I've chosen two different prints. So I've got a little denim style print. This is just quilting cotton and my colorful print on the back. Now remember whatever you choose for the back is going to be your fold over ears. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing your fabrics. Now those front and back pieces uh, cut, make sure you put in all of your markings there on your pattern piece and they are cut from your quilting cotton with your fusible woven interfacing applied. So we have those two and then we need our arm pieces. Now I've gone ahead and coordinated mine to match the ears. So I've cut those in that same fabric. I have backed them in the little denim uh, print fabric as well and you need your four pieces for those and they also have fusible woven interfacing applied. You'll need a felt filler for those little arms. So just your two little felt fillers and they have fusible webbing applied so that we can iron those on into place. It just gives those little arms a little bit of volume. You're also going to need your base pieces which are two pieces of felt and they are cut with uh, fusible webbing applied too and we create our little base piece that gives us a tail and something coordinating will work just fine. The base that goes inside the little dog is cut from, I cut mine from mat board. So picture framing mat board that I get from my local picture framers and I just take all their off cuts and I glue two of these together. You've got your template there to tell you the size I glue two of them together with PVA glue. I usually do it the day before, but you can use craft glue if you want a quick drying glue. So you need that base. That just makes our little mama dog stand up nicely. You're also going to need her front muzzle piece, which I cut from felt. I like that little bit of volume, but you can certainly just use fabric for that piece. And uh, that one also has your fusible webbing applied. And so does the little eye patch. And that can be fabric if you like. I've gone ahead and used felt, so you need one of those. And you're also going to need your little nose piece, which again, I have cut uh, with felt with that fusible webbing applied again. We're then going to be needing our pieces. Now I've given you some templates for the little bone, and that is just two pieces of felt with fusible webbing applied. We only use the fusible webbing for a little bit of strength with, with that one. So that's if you're wanting to make that little bone. And then we need our pieces for our little puppies. So I've made two puppies here, um, but you can see there that 
they're just very simply put together with felt. Now the way they are put together is your pattern pieces for your little arms, your body and your tail, they are cut from double felt. Double felt is just two pieces of felt joined together with fusible webbing. Now I actually have a video that shows you how to make double felt. It's a video about preparing your felt for sewing. So uh, you can have a look at that. And so you need your arms, your body and your little tail piece cut from double felt. Then we have our little head pieces. Now the same as mama, whatever you choose for the back of the head is what will be your ear color there, you see? So I've chosen the chocolate brown so that ear fold over is very, very visible. And both of those front and back head pieces are cut from felt with fusible woven interfacing applied. We need a little bit of strength there with that one. And then our last piece is our little muzzle piece, which is just the same as mum's um, with that fusible webbing applied, just, and I've done mine in felt there. So the other things that you're going to need, you are going to need a little snap fastener. That's how mama holds her hands together. I've just chosen the biggest one that I can find. You might have something else that's suitable. And you will need a variety of your extra strong threads. And I'm also using some pearl thread. This one is an eight ply, just for your different stitching and embroidery on this little project. Also, if you do have a wool felting needle, that's gonna come in really handy because we're going to be filling this little one completely with polyester filling. And you will also need, the only other thing you're going to need is your clear craft glue, which is clear, it's quick drying, um, and it's especially made for fabric. So if you're starting with me and you're a beginner sewer here, I want you to feel very confident. I know that looks like that there's a lot of pieces. I have described this as a good pattern for beginners and it is. Um, and you have to trust that I'm going to walk you through every step of the way. So there's no mystery to this one. And if everybody got somebody by the hand, maybe everybody could learn and understand. So you should feel confident in moving forward. So the first step that I will show you is we're going to start with the little arms. So we want to add that little bit of substance to those arms. So I'm taking each of my back pieces of my arms that will be facing the body. And I'm just going to, I've removed the backing papers from those felt pieces. And you can see when I lay that on there, that I've got about a five millimeter space around and a little more space at the end here. That's because these sections are going to be sewn into the seam to hold those little arms in place. And I don't want to be sewing through all of that bulk. We also want a little bit of space all around the edge there. So when we sew our four millimeter seam, that that little arm will turn through and it will all sit beautifully flat just with that lovely little bit of extra volume. So first step, you can go ahead and press those two into place using a hot iron and a protective cloth. Once you have those little felt pieces pressed into place, we're just going to take our other piece and we're gonna put right sides together on each of those little arm sections. Make sure they're all nicely lined up. And then we're going to be sewing a four millimeter seam allowance from this edge right the way around that little arm shape to this edge. Make sure that you're back and forth when you start and finish and we leave this section open. So just do that on both of those little arm sections. So there you can see I've got my two little arm pieces. Now I've stitched them around as I've shown you and I've turned them both through and I've gone ahead and used my knitting needle to really push those seams out and rolled those seams out so that they're all nice and even you can see either side. Now I always take mine and I give them a nice press and it's the little things that you do that will give you beautiful finish in the end. And also I know what it's like, you, you might wanna just get them turned through and, and quickly go on to the next stage. But you know, if you take those little steps, take the time to press out those seams, get everything rolled out beautifully, these pieces will be easier to add in your, in your next step. 
so always keep that in mind for beautiful finish so we've got those two little pieces done I have just stitched those openings closed right close to the edge there it just makes it easier for when we're popping it into the seam so we can pop those aside now I also didn't mention we're going to need for those little hands some little press studs for uh, closing those little holding those little hands together and I've just got your simple little um, silver ones there so our next step is to go ahead and add our face pieces to mama dog so what I've done there is pressed on my muzzle piece and my little eye patch that muzzle piece needs to sit exactly three centimeters from the top of the head to the top of that little muzzle template and you need to make sure that it's beautifully centered here as well get that one pressed into place and then when you take your little eye patch you'll see that I've designed it and cut it to fit exactly in that little indentation there so you'll see that it will line up beautifully just to leave a little space of probably around about three to four millimeters between those two pieces so that our stitching stays nice and independent of each other so our next step is to go ahead and sew those pieces on now you can do it on the machine certainly and if you do it on the machine you could either use a straight machine stitch all the way around both of those or you could do a very close small zigzag more like a satin stitch all the way around I'm going to be sewing a blanket applique stitch again keeping in with that very homely sort of look that that works with this design I've got my extra strong thread in a contrasting color I'm going with the same sort of rust um, I love sewing with extra strong thread because the thread doesn't fatigue as it passes through uh, your fabric a lot of times it stays nice and strong and crisp so I've got a knot in the end and I've just come out right on that uh, the edge there usually at a lower edge and uh, I'm going to start my blanket applique stitch now I am going to put a link at the top there for you I do have a video that shows you how to sew this stitch very up close detail but we're just going to start here and I'll show you we're going to start with our first stitch I'm going to keep them nice and small and I'm just going in through all the layers and I'm coming out right on the edge of that shape taking my needle through and coming out through that loop so there is my first stitch keeping my stitches all the same I've traveled just a little way along they're probably about three millimeters I've come out just on the edge again and coming bringing my needle out through that loop again and you can see that's created that little stitch it just sits across the top there and that will continue on all the way around that little pattern piece so I'm going to get that one stitched into place and I'm going to do the same thing with that little eye patch you'll notice I haven't added my little nose well I don't do that because when I'm sewing these pieces on I'm, I'm working over that felt a lot I'm going backwards and forwards and if I've got my little nose piece which is felt pressed on there can be some wear and tear on that little nose and I don't want to um, change that nice crisp little edge so I will get these two sewn on and then I'm going to press my little nose piece in place you can see where that one will sit and remember it's not a circle it's an eclipse shape so the widest part is across horizontally and you just want it to sit just almost level with the bridge of that nose there because we're going to be sewing in a little smile so you can go ahead and sew those into place whatever method you want to use press that little nose on and do the same with that and there we have those little pattern pieces all stitched nicely in place you can see how nice that little blanket applique stitch looks on that one so now all we need to do we need to give mama dog a smile if you see someone without, without a smile give them yours so we're going to start by creating that little line now you can make a full smile if you like you can do a little half smile like I have you can use anything like the bottom of a cotton reel just to get that little shape I like the little half smile so I'm going to go with that so we're going to start with pearl thread this is an eight ply you can see I've just used a fine marker to mark in 
just that little stitch line just enough for me to see I'm covering it with black anyway so we'll be all good so I'm just going to start right where my first little mark is I've got a knot in the end of my eight ply pearl thread and I'm going to keep my stitches nice and small and I'm just going to follow my line we sew this one with a linked back stitch so that's my first stitch then I'm traveling up a little further along that line from behind coming out and then I'm going to go back into that same hole that I just came out of so that it's nicely linked we don't want any spaces travel along a little further and back into that same hole each time It'll give you a nice clear line so I will continue on up until the top edge there so that has all of my facial features done them a little smile in place now I don't add my buttons now you certainly can if you want to you can stitch those on now I wait until my little one is put together and stuffed um, and then I add my my little button eyes from behind because then I can get a little bit of pull in and when you get that little bit of depth it just adds that little bit more character so but that's entirely up to you so my next step is just to stitch those little arm pieces in place as you can see just along the side there just within that seam and when we go ahead now we're going to add our back piece and we're going to line that all up all the way around you can use the pins or clips whatever you like and we're going to be sewing from the base we're leaving the base open back and forth right the way around that entire top edge back down to the other side make sure you're back and forth here I do like to sew that seam two times because we're going to be really packing this body quite firm and do make sure that you really do incorporate that little arm within that seam so make sure you take it deep enough now the seam allowance is four millimeters and just follow that all the way around and back and forth on those start and finishes on those arm pieces also you can see that stitching all done there I've also gone around it's a good idea to take your pinking shears if you have them and clip around those curves it just means when we turn it through we're going to get a nice smooth curve if you don't have pinking shears just at least clip with the tips of your scissors those very obvious tight curves there so now all we need to do is turn that one through and push out all of those seams again as we have before and I will use my knitting needle to do that now once you've got that little one all turned through take it back to your iron and give this top section a little press remember to protect felt there if you've got it press those ears nice and flat so these are our little fold over sections of our ears now if you have a look on your pattern template you'll see that you've got a little line either side that shows you exactly where to stitch across so what we're going to do now I've marked that in just with a marker and I'm going to stitch through all of the layers just straight across the edge there back and forth here and here both ways what that will do is it will stop any filling from going into the ears and it means that our fold over will be nice and clean once it's all filled and folded over so do make sure that you follow those lines because if you have those angles wrong your little ears will not fold correctly they will fold too far over so just make sure it's all marked there on your template get those two little ear sections stitched so I now have those little ear sections nicely sectioned off and we can start with our filling I'm going to be filling using my forceps I have longer forceps here for this sort of thing so I'm going to start by filling those areas at the top there make sure you do fill out that ear at the base of that ear area because that just keeps a nice clean ear set fold over so we just want to pack this one nice and firm as I always say and keep watching as you're filling that you're filling out evenly pack out those little cheeks 
the little sides where those arms are you'll see it all come together as you start to fill it bring in it will bring in that little face section and give you some lovely shapes so just to give you an idea on this little one this is very firm not much giving that at all so you really want that that sort of result there once you get to the base keep packing and filling as you go and use your wool felting needle if you have one to pack those fibers in because it's quite an open cavity you'll find your filling wants to jump back out at you so keep packing it in and as you go use your wool felting needle to pack it in I'll show you that as we get closer up to the edge fill to almost the edge probably just about barely a centimeter from the edge and get that as flat as you can right so there we go I've got that one all filled out you can see that lovely shape comes in together now once that filling is in I've just temporarily just pinned those little ears down into place and also those little arms it gives you a good look at your what your finished result is going to look like and I filled that one you can see just it's about a centimetre from the base and I've gone ahead with my felting needle and I've been able to pack that whole section nice and firm and flat it does make all the difference using one of those and now I've gone ahead and sewn just with a double strand a long doubled strand of my extra strong thread um, I've gone around with a running stitch just about half a centimeter in from the base left my tail ends hanging started at the back and come around back to the back again and that will allow me to pull that drawstring in so now I just have to pop that little base disc in because we made that little base stuffing nice and flat that's going to go in nicely it should be a nice snug fit that gives us a better finish and you can press that one down and of course as we pull that in it's going to make all of our filling nice and firm there so we're going to pull that one in and all you need to do is tie off your first knot you don't need these edges to come in right into the center to meet up you just need them to be pulled in enough so that that base is covered we're going to add that little tail base section so I'm just going to knot that one off at least four times and we'll be ready to work on our base and so there we go that has our little mama dog all pulled in I actually went around there a second time tied that in so that's nice and flat and she can be popped aside there ready while we're going to create the little base section which incorporates her tail so the first thing I've done now remember that these two pieces have fusible webbing applied I've taken those papers off of the back and the first thing I've done is I've just stitched followed the line of that circle and I've just stitched on the machine that tail section together and the next step is I'm going to go to my iron and I'm going to press just this section together to fuse it to make one piece which turns it into double felt just this section we don't press, press this section at all we need this to be opened so you can go ahead and get that one done so there we go that has just the circle section fused together and now this piece is double felt and this section of the tail is left open be very careful when you're pressing because you'll be very cross trust me if you press those two together so now we're going to be sewing just around a part of the tail section now this little piece sits on the base here and it gives us our little tail out the back there so we want to add a little bit of filling to that tail and I'm going to have mine my little tail section I'm going to have it pointing to the right you can have it either way it really doesn't matter but because this is the section that's going to be glued to the base I can actually take my knot and hide it here and come through so I'm going to start sewing a blanket stitch so I'm using pearl thread and eight ply this time and I'm starting from the very curved edge because we want to leave a little opening here and it's easier to close an opening that is on a straighter edge so my knot has held there and I'm going to start right there so a blanket stitch is just taking our needle through all of the layers 
and coming out through the loop it's very like the blanket applique stitch I'm going to put a link up the top there that shows you how to sew this one I've got a video that tells you that and I'm going to keep my stitches nice and small and you can see each time I'm just going to be coming out through the loop and that's going to bind those two edges together make sure they're nicely lined up so I'm going to keep working that stitch all the way around till about here I'm going to leave a little space there and then I'm going to show you how we're going to add a little bit of filling and you can see now that I've stitched my blanket stitch right the way around there I'm going to take my little forceps I've left my needle and thread on I'm just going to open up that section because remember it's got fusible webbing and as you're holding that and stitching it can warm up that glue so make sure that's separated and now I'm just going to tuck in a little bit of filling just in the end of that tail just to add a little bit of volume but we're going to avoid the part that's closest to the body so you really want to get that filling right in around that little tail tip there and we don't need much for this section because we definitely don't want to fill it right up to that tail base because then it won't sit right when we add it to the body so you can see that's taking that in there now you have to you can take your little mama dog and, and settle her on there and you can see just how that's sitting so if you fill it too close to the edge here it's going to make that tail sit up too much so we still want it to sit nice and flat so I'll just add a tiny bit more and then I will go ahead and just continue on and close that opening and so now that I've got that one all filled and that opening closed I've just gone ahead and added my clear craft glue to the base of that one because this side with the knot showing that's the side that's going to be glued to my little mama so all you have to do is glue that to the base of your little mama dog you want to make sure it's nicely lined up at the back pop that one into place you can see everything sitting nice and flat check that your edges are right and even it will move around a little for a few minutes before it starts to dry this glue is quite quick drying which is exactly what we want and we really want to make sure that all of those edges are pushed down nice and firm we're going to be sewing a nice blanket applique stitch around that base which is really going to settle it into place so make sure it's all lined up you can see you've got a little tail effect there that's so cute Turn, it, turn her around and we will let that sit there for probably about 20 minutes so it's all very dry before we start our stitching right so that glue is dry now on that base and we can go ahead and sew that one into place so I'm using that same pearl thread that I used on the tail and I've got a long strand with a, a single strand with a knot in the end and I've just taken my needle in between those two layers I'm going to hide my knot in between there so I've just pulled that one through so my starting point is just one side of the little tail and it's really just as simple as sewing a blanket applique stitch only it's on a 3d form so we're going to take our stitches probably around about four millimeter the, the four millimeters those stitches so again I'm going through both of the layers making sure that I'm taking up some of that fabric that is the body going through make my first stitch and coming out through that loop and pulling that one in nice and firm because that's our starting point this section doesn't get sewn to the base so we make sure that these points are really well anchored you can see there each time I'm just going to take some of that felt and make sure that I'm coming out right on that edge there and taking up some of that body fabric out through the loop and pulling that one in and what that's going to give us probably easier to see on this one is that lovely little blanket applique edge and it's beautiful professional finish for if you're selling your work 
or even just gifting it's just lovely to have that lovely finish so I'm going to sew right the way around to meet up with the other side there we go so that has that lovely base all stitched in a lovely little finished effect there so the next thing I've gone ahead and done is I've just sewn on my little snap fastener there you can have them crossing over either way doesn't make any difference but when you do sew them on make sure you're just sewing them on through this base layer so that we don't see anything at the front there and that has her little arms all ready to hold whatever you're going to make for her so my next step is just to anchor these ears in um, now the simplest way I find is that first of all I take a couple of pins and I get them exactly where I want them so I've got a nice little fold over they're out the way of the eyes I do my eyes last so that once the ears are set into place I can see where the, the eyes look best so there I have them pulled in and that's where I think they look the best I've got my pin pins either side and I've gone ahead and I've made a mark on the underside of the ear might be a bit hard for you to see it's enough for me to see and a mark here so now I've taken a doubled strand of extra strong thread and I'm just going to come in at the back of the head here I'm using a thread that matches the back color not that it really matters because we really won't be seeing anything there but I'm just going to come out one side of that little mark that I've got there with my medium doll needle because it's just one stitch that we're looking to take so I'm going to pull that one through but I'm going to leave tail ends hanging I'm also going to enlarge that little hole the entry hole with my awl that's so I can find it easily coming back through so now I'm going to take up a little stitch across only the backing fabric of that ear so I'm not catching that front just a little stitch across then I'm going to go back in the other side of that little mark just enough to give it some hold then I'm going to come out with my needle right through the same entry hole and you might think oh that'll be hard to find but it's not because you've already created a little passageway there so we're just going to pull all those threads up you can check your placement when I pull that in you can see it's nicely tucked into the head there but it's not pulling the front of the ear so it all looks very fluid so all I'm going to do and remember that I've got those threads have made two different pathways through there so I can tie them off into that hole I will knot it off nice and tight and then I will knot it off a couple more times and you'll find that the little knot once you snip the thread ends it'll just dive back under that fabric and that little hole will barely be seen so I'm going to tie that off and I'll show you what I mean so there you can see those little ears both pulled in the same either side nicely in place and now we need to work out our eye positioning so you can see there that I've just used my little eye pins now you can use just normal uh, um, pins normal glass head pins and get your eye placement right there and once you've got that right I'm using teddy bear eye testers here take those out and I have my little marks already made remember wherever you have your eye placement that it will pull in which is why we're doing it now so whether you're using buttons or actually a little teddy bear eye on a shank the way that we put them in is the same so we start off with a double strand of our extra strong thread I'm using black because I'm going through the little button so I'm going to start again at the back of the head like we did before just somewhere nicely in the center and I'm going to come out just one side because I have a button I'm just coming out one side of the little mark that I've made might take a few goes to find that 
right spot. Pull that one through. Again, we're going to leave that tail end hanging and we're also going to go back and we're going to enlarge that hole as we did before, that entry hole. We're just going to make it a little bit larger. We never cut that, we're just parting the fibres there with our orb. If you cut it, it will become an actual hole. So now I just go from the back of my button in back through the front again. Now I've now got that eye secured. Pull up those threads and I'm going to go very close to where I came out so my eye positioning is still correct. And I'm going to travel across to the other side. So now I'm going to add the other eye because we're going to put it all on one thread. Just one side of it there. I'm making sure my Positioning is right. Pull that one through. Watch that your threads aren't twisted. To pull that one in. And then we're going to do the same thing and add that second eye from the back through the front, pull that one in, we're going to go back in just that side of that little mark and then we're going to come out through that same first entry point again, just a matter of having your needle find that spot which it has there, pull that one through and then we just need to make sure that all of our threads are straight. Everything is pulled through, nothing is twisted. Nothing is tangled because we've got a few there that we're working with. So just make sure you pull on each independent thread. One at a time. one there, there we go and we pull them all up until that eye is sitting where we want it. I'll pull those threads in and give it a little squeeze, pull those thread ends in independently and then you can see you've got a nice little bit of pull in there that really changes that facial character there and I will just do the same thing as we just did with the ears and knot those off and sink those thread ends. So there you go, that has our little mama dog all completed. Now she's just waiting for her little puppies and her little bones. So we're gonna go ahead and make those. So we can just set her aside and we will start with our body pieces of our little puppies. I already have one of mine made. So we're going to start with double felt pieces and they are the body section the little overhanging arms and the little tail section. Now I just sew around each of these pieces with a very small blanket stitch and I use my extra strong thread because it's so nice and fine and strong. Now the way that it's put together is like this. It's going to be layered on top of each other. So I've hidden my knot at the front here because it will be covered by this piece and I can do the same with this section. So. You can see how small my stitches are there. I'm going to sew that same little blanket stitch. So a blanket stitch is still a blanket stitch regardless of its size. Sometimes when it's really little we call it a buttonhole stitch. But you can see I've just hidden that knot there at the front because the little head is going to cover that section. And I just make that same little blanket stitch that we have used throughout, keeping my stitches nice and tiny. And that's just a really nice finish. It's very quick to do. You don't have to worry about holding edges together because you're just sewing a double piece of felt. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch around the entire outside of that edge. 
and then I'm going to do the same with the little tail now if you find that little tail very tiny and very challenging you can just leave it plain because those those raw edges are fully sealed by being bonded together those two pieces of felt with that fusible webbing so it's not going to fray so if that's a little bit too challenging don't worry too much I have actually just stitched the, my little one um, but then I'm used to doing the stitch so you can go ahead and get those pieces all stitched ready so once you have all of those little body pieces all stitched we can pop those aside ready and we're going to start to work on the little face of our little pups so I've pressed on into place my little muzzle section just just the same way that we did with uh, our mama bear and that little edge there I'm going to stitch using my extra strong thread and my uh, and a blanket applique stitch so I'm going to stitch around there you could do it on the machine with a tiny little straight stitch so I'm going to get that piece stitched on before we go ahead with the little nose and mouth so there you can see there that I've got that little muzzle piece all stitched on and I've gone ahead and I've just drawn in might be very hard to see there drawn on a little mouth and just a little line across to make that nose just uh, to sew uh, very fine now it doesn't have to be perfect it's just a couple of stitches and I'll do the same little back stitch I'm using my extra strong thread again um, and I'm using black and you can see there it really is just enough to make a little indication of a nose and a little smile there and uh, and there we go so I've got those pieces all done and now I've joined my front to my back at the little marks that you'll have on your pattern template that show you where to stitch across just like we did with mama's ears so I've stitched them on the machine make sure make sure you follow those marks because that will give you the correct little ear fold um, and they will fold over and leave you room for your eyes there so our next step is we're going to be sewing all the way around that little headpiece using a the same little blanket stitch that we've been using we're going to leave the top of the head open there so I've got my extra strong thread again a single strand a knot in the end and I've just hidden that knot in between those layers there I've just tucked that little knot in there and I can go ahead and make my little blanket stitch and make sure that it's very secure on that start there and really anchor those little points in and I'm just going to make my way right around the way around that ear the bottom of the chin and back again we're going to leave this section open so that we can add a little bit of filling in there once that's done and leave your needle on once you get to that other side And so now I've added my little bit of filling now that I've got all my stitching done and I've tucked that uh, filling in there I've used my tiny forceps for this it's been really handy and you only need enough filling just to plump out that face enough so that when we add our little eyes there you can see that we'll just be able to pull that in and it will give us just that little bit of three-dimensional look there and I have also used my felting needle again and tucked that in there and now I can go ahead and I can close that little top of the head continue on with my little blanket stitch and there you can see I've got that all closed so that's all ready to go and I've gone ahead and come in from behind I've been able to fold those little ears over just as we did with mama now because of the way this puppy's head is attached to the body any work we do behind the head it won't be seen so we can hide all of our knots there so I've gone in and just taken those threads through pulled those little ears in just like we did with mama and now I've made those little marks for my eyes I'm just going to do two little sleepy eyes there again I've come in from behind I'm using my pearl thread whoops this time and we're going to come through on that first mark it's a single strand of eight ply pearl thread and just go back in pull that one through and really pull on that and get some nice tension there and get some nice pull in on that little eye you can see that there I hope you can see that 
pull that in and you'll want to anchor that stitch behind to secure that little stitch to keep that tension up then come out the other side and do the same thing back through and make your second little eye so there we have a little completed little puppy head and now all we need to do is add it to the body so that's quite simple putting all our body pieces together I've got a double strand of extra strong thread this time and I'm going to leave my um, tail ends hanging so I don't need a knot in the end I've got my front arm pieces over the top of my little body piece there I'm going to come in from behind and just one side and all the way through leave those tail ends hanging for tying off and have a little look at your positioning of your your little puppy's head there it should sit just above the back and it's probably about one centimeter so that gives you an idea on the other puppy there so once you've had a little look he should have a little shrugged shoulder sort of a look um, just estimate where that stitch needs to come across and and then it's just a matter of taking a nice decent stitch across the back of that head keep it nice and even and parallel take that one all the way through and then you're going to travel back through I'm just going to go back just the other side of where I came out and back through just the other side of where I started and I'll just pull all those threads up and make sure that everything is where it should be check your positioning and also again make sure that your threads aren't twisted there make sure everything's coming through nice and straight have a look at your little head position and it should be just right and that is so I will just flip that one over and I will just tie off that little one just as we have previous and tie that nice and tight a couple of times snip the thread ends and you can see there that's got my little head I actually changed my thread color there um, so if you don't get it exactly right it's nothing to just redo it so now I'm going to add my little tail so I've got the same double thread going through the tail got your little tail position there and this time we're just going to take a little stitch through the bottom there but we're not going all the way through to the other side of the fabric because we don't want that stitch to be seen at the front there pull that one all the way through and again back through the tail piece just one side of it pull up those threads and then we're going to do the same thing as we did before where we just tied a knot and snip those thread ends so there's our two little puppies absolutely gorgeous and now if you want to make the little bone it's very very simple it's just your two pieces of felt put together and we're not turning it through so it's wrong sides together we're going to use that same little blanket stitch that we've been using start right at the end on one of the straight pieces make your way around and stop and leave a little opening there just as before we're going to leave our thread on and then you can fill that little bone you know you can make it as, as soft or as full as you like before you close that opening up and that's all done mine's actually quite firm um, um, but you can make it any way you like you can make it quite flat if you like so now we've got all of our we've got our little puppies in our bone and let's see how they look with mama so here we have our completed little mama dog and uh, hasn't she got her hands full I can relate to this mama that it takes me back to the days of holding so many of my tribe so and look how amazing she's even got dinner sorted as well so I really hope you've enjoyed this one I've thoroughly enjoy putting this one together for you all and if you've liked this one remember that I do have Mama Bear and check out my playlist for my other Mama series we have penguins and we have kangaroos and there's quite a few others there so have a little look and uh, and make them up in some fabulous colors I can't wait to see what you're all going to do with little Mama Dog so I hope you really have fun 
Well, thank you all so much for joining me today. I thoroughly enjoyed working on this little one and uh, I think maybe we need a kitty. We probably need a kitty mama, don't we? So I need to look at that. I will definitely be offering you a few. I keep getting ask, asked for birds and I will be introducing a couple of bird patterns. Um, that's something very close to my heart too. So I hope you're enjoying them all. I'm loving hearing from you all. Chat to me in the comments. Remember to listen for those movie quotes. They're always in there. There's two in this one. So we'll see who catches them. I'm having a whole lot of fun designing for you all and I'm going to continue to do that. Thank you for all of your love and appreciation and make sure everybody that you keep being creative, you stay safe and most of all, pay all of those lovely things forward. Till next time, it's Huru from me.